Have you purchased illegal drugs in the last two years? Yes, I have. I've named the names. Um, litigation will be starting shortly. I've had enough. Plenty of heat at Toronto City Hall. Any light? The politicians have had their say. Now it's our turn. Time for Sunday Scrum. We've been watching this situation closely and listening very carefully. Events continue to move quickly. And the things that we are seeing and hearing about Mayor Rob Ford are truly disturbing. Another rough week for Rob Ford, no doubt about that. Allegations of cocaine use, hiring prostitutes, driving drunk, demands to resign, pleas to take a leave, and now moves to curtail his powers. Our Sunday Scrum's been watching it all, ready to go, in Ottawa freelance columnist Susan Riley, Rosemary Barton with CBC News in Toronto, Jamie Watt, executive chair of Navigator Limited, part of the Nationals Insiders panel on CBC. So, Jamie, yet another a week of head-spinning, gobsmacking surprises. <laughs> and revelations. I don't know how else to talk about it. But at the end of the week, uh, the city, certainly councillors, rallied together and very methodically moved to start stripping some of the powers of, of Rob Ford. Has city politics turned a corner here? Has council found a way to move forward? Well, I don't know, but clearly Rob Ford has figured out how to do what nobody else has been able to do, which is to unite a fractious, mm. polarized, dysfunctional mm. council that has never been able to get together <laughs> on anything right. since the day that they were they were elected. I think councillors are uh, recognizing the gravity of the situation and realizing that they've got to move carefully and with some dignity. And in terms of dignity, look at the difference between those scrums which the uh, uh, Mayor held and Premier Wynne's uh, remarks, right. you know, it's such a, such a contrast. So on the one hand, I think maybe they are finding a way through this. On the other hand, it's going to be pretty hard to see once the intensity of this issue passes, how we'll have any kind of functionality under this setup. Yeah, interesting. Susan, so uh, despite all of this, Rob Ford continues to maintain he's not going anywhere. Can he actually tough this out? I don't know, there was a sign in the protests in front of City Hall the other day saying, even Santa doesn't want you. Mm, <laughs> I right. found that kind of poignant, <laughs> you know, because he's been disinvited to the exactly. Santa Claus parade. I mean, there's a, there's a bigger challenge coming on Monday when council will decide whether or not to slash his budget mm -hmm. significantly. Um, I guess he will go from 19 staff to 3 staff. Right. Uh, is this going to stop him? I don't think so. However, I do think his profile is almost bound uh, to be diminished. I think what he'll do is kind of revert to the sort of social social work that he likes to do, uh, which is actually very useful constituency work. Everybody who calls him gets a call back. He'll go out to your, right. you know, if there's a dispute about snow removal or something, he'll come He'll come over and, and check it out. Um, beyond that, he's so unwelcome so many places that I do think um, his profile will diminish unless two, one of two things okay. happens. He falls off the wagon again and disgraces himself somehow, or there are charges of some kind late, okay. in which case the whole thing will flare up again. So Rosie, one thing that seems to have changed is earlier in the week people were still saying, look, for your own health, just take a break and mm -hmm. you can come back and we'd all be okay with that. Mm -hmm. Is that now off the table? He's left it too long. He doesn't sound like he's interested in even considering it, but even if he were, it's too late. Yeah, I mean, I think the window for that redemption story that we've talked about here before is maybe gone. Mm. Um, I, I think, though, that there are a couple of things that could save. Well, I, I think the things that pushed o people over the edge this week, Nancy, were two things. The admission yeah. that he had been doing drunk driving, mm -hmm. which I think for a lot of people is very worrisome for them personally, right? To know that this guy is on the street and had been drinking and driving. And, and the crassness of the remarks right. that were made uh, that we're not going to repeat here. But I think a lot of people took offense to them and then were very disturbed to see his wife standing there with him when he was apologizing for those comments. So was, in some ways that sort of bothered people more than the other stuff in a strange way. So I, I, I think that the window for the, the rehab story um, might be over. I, I, even if he left now, I, I think it would be very difficult for him to come back as this right. renewed person. However, I do think that if on Monday they managed to strip his budget and remove his staff, he might actually benefit from that in some way because he is that guy who likes the story of the lone wolf mm. to be isolated, mm. fighting for the little guy, that might feed into that story a little bit. Mm. And, I w and I wonder if he is at the stage where he might be able to take advantage right. of that in some way.
What do you think, Jamie? I mean, if he were marginalized, might that actually position him better mm -hmm. for the next election? Uh, I'm not sure it will, but if, if it w would for anybody, it would for him. Right. Because as Rosie <laughs> says, it feeds right into his narrative. Mm. Me against fighting for you against all those big mm. bad elites. It's us against yeah. And them. look at the yeah. price right. I paid for it and so forth and so on. So if anyone has got a chance to make it, he does. I think, though, at the moment, um, this has gotten to a pretty, pretty ugly place. And remember, Justice Nordheimer is still sitting on pages and pages yeah, yeah. of documents. More those, to come. And there's going to be more to come. And yeah. as we've said all along, I don't think he just said, let's release the bad stuff and we'll keep the good stuff till the end, right? <laughs> okay. So there's lots more to come on this. So I don't think we're finished. Okay. So we mentioned earlier, of course, Kathleen Wynne, albeit reluctantly, uh, spoke uh, about the possibility or scenario uh, under which the provincial government might get involved. Uh, we would just want to listen to some of what she had to say this past week. If council were to clearly indicate that they lack the ability to function as a result of this matter, the province would respond to a request from council to be provided new tools depending on what that request might be. So, Jamie, uh, when Kathleen Wynne outlined that, well, that was Thursday. Then Friday, of course, council started making moves right. to strip Mayor Ford of some of his powers. Do you think no one was more relieved than Kathleen Wynne? Because at that point, it looked like provincial intervention would not be required because council did look like they were able to function. Right, but uh, Kathleen Wynne also put a little bit of a booby trap in what she uh, said mm -hmm. that she was going to do, and that was for Mr. Hudak because she said, quite rightly, I lead a minority government, this is an extraordinary thing to do, and I'd only be comfortable doing it if, wait for it, the entire legislature voted unanimously in favor. Well, of course, that puts Mr. Uh, Hudak, who has, uh, has Doug Ford as a potential candidate right. and a uh, cl close relationship with the Fords in, in a very difficult spot. It was a s good piece of governance and a very smart piece of politics all rolled into one. You know, I think every time we've talked in the past three weeks, we've, we've, we've speculated on whether the Ford story has any impact on federal conservatives. But I just wonder, Susan, uh, when you hear Chris Alexander, who in an interview on the CBC Radio's The House, talked about how it is hard for his government, tough on crime agenda, to have this guy doing things that really flies in the face of uh, you know that agenda. Is it possible that over time that discomfort level is rising among federal conservatives? Well, it should be. I mean, it's a little late in the game, quite frankly. I mean, the, the display of moral cowardice among conservatives generally mm. um, has been quite stunning. I mean, essentially, what they're doing is waiting to see whether Ford Nation soldiers on right. and remains, you know, an enticing voting uh, kind of constituency. Um, they're waiting to see if the mayor, sure. in other words, totally alienates everyone before they move in and say anything about him. But as we've said before, this is a, a government and a movement, particularly here in Ottawa, um, that has been so strident and harsh uh, about other people's um, problems, you right. know, people that aren't useful to them and very tough on, you know, guns and gangs and drugs and whatnot. I think their silence has been quite disgraceful. And I think, you know, Mr. Alexander sort of put his toe in the water. But apart from that, they've been pretty hands off. Well, and even this week, Nancy, Peter McKay put out this, you know, a big yeah. statement about comments Justin Trudeau had mm. made around marijuana right. in a school um, in, in Manitoba as he was there uh, campaigning for a by-election. And he came out very tough condemning the way Justin Trudeau had made these comments, particularly in a school. Um, so you contrast that with the very little that is right. being said about mm. Rob Ford and his admissions, and it becomes... Um, Double standard. Yeah, I mean, it becomes a little bit hypocritical. You know, I, I get what's going on right. politically, but I don't know how sustainable it is to keep up those two, sto two, um, two stories, if you will. Okay, well, we're going to pause on the Rob Ford story. Council may not be able to move on, we'll have to see, but we're moving on, we have to take a break. But coming up next, we're shifting our attention to Finance Minister Jim Flaherty, who says a big budget surplus, guess what, two years away, just in time for voters to go to the polls. So what sort of election goodies can you expect? Sunday Scrum weighs in straight ahead, stick around.